This is George Dion of the Rock is George podcast, and this is a KNAC.com exclusive interview with bassist Jeff Pilson of the Melodic Rock AOR Act, Revolution Saints. If I knew absolutely nothing about Revolution Saints, how would you describe the band's music to me? I would describe the band's music as very melodic, hard rock. Um, it's got an edge, um, but it is, it's very, very melodic. It's, you know, you, you could call it kind of classic AOR style music, I guess. Um, or you could call it heavy journey. <laughs> That's kind of what I think of it. <laughs> well, I was going to say the project is a bit of a love letter to journey, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. No question. You guys are releasing your fifth studio album against the winds on february 9th through frontiers music it's the follow-up to eagle flight which came out only seven months ago right. was was that a uh a pr very productive period that spawned two albums or was is there another reason between just a short time between releases no i mean just yeah we got the material we're we're ready to go why not do it um yeah, I mean, I, 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 the main writer for the band is Alessandro Del Vecchio, and he's a very prolific guy. So if he's coming up with the music, and uh, it, why not? <laughs> I've spoken Remember back in the olden days when people used to put out a couple of records a year. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, and they were only like eight songs, though. <laughs> or yeah, sometimes, but yeah, I you're right. I've spoken to Alessandro a couple times, and uh, he's definitely prolific. He understands the sound of the guys that he's working with. So it was probably easy working with him for you guys, right? Very. I mean, yeah, Alessandro's amazing. He really is. You're also a songwriter and producer yourself. Is it a little weird handing things over to, to someone else where you're used to being that hands-on guy? No, not when I have faith in them um i mean I, I work with alessandro a lot and i have like i say i have endless faith in him so no actually for me in revolution saints it's kind of nice to have a project where i just play bass it's it's kind of nice you know it's like it's almost like a vacation <laughs> in some ways uh and again it's because i trust him so you know i have no problems with it Sometimes or most of the time with the sort of all-star projects at Frontiers, nobody's in the same room putting an album together. Everybody's got their busy lives, their other bands. So it's it's done by long distance recording and file sharing and stuff like that. But have <laughs> you had a chance to mingle with the guys in Revolution Saints since you joined a couple of years back? Oh, yeah. Well, we certainly mingle when we do all the videos and photos and all that. Um, yeah. And in fact, we are talking about Hopefully, um, being able to set up and and do a little playing before the next record and do a little jamming to uh, to to maybe inspire some writing for the next one, which I think would be absolutely amazing. I mean, how cool would that be? Getting up in a room and playing together. That would be great. Well, I think fans are clamoring for more and more from Revolution Saints since its founding, certainly looking for something in the, the live arena, which is a little tough for you guys because you all got your own things going on. That's right. That's right. It, it, it's really hard to pull that stuff off, not only logistically, but um, financially, it's hard to pull off. Um, it, it's just it is difficult with everybody. Scheduling is a real nightmare with that kind of thing. But having said that, we would love to do that. And, you know, my schedule is going to be opening up a bit in 2025. So I'm hoping maybe there's a chance to do some some live playing with some of these projects. I, you know, fingers crossed. As good as Alessandro is, do you get some type of input on the songwriting and composing? Well, I haven't on the last two records, but um, we're talking about it for this next one. Yeah. I mean, when I joined pretty much the material for these two records was already in place. So, um, so yeah, uh, but now for the next run, uh, we are talking about writing together and, um, you know, getting the band involved in the writing, not just Alessandro. So that would be really cool if that could happen. I've actually already submitted a couple songs that Alessandro said he wants to do. So, so yeah, I mean, I, I think that it'll be a little more band involvement next time. And I think that's going to be great. 
you and Joel Hoekstra joined the band for the last release. How did you get recruited for this project? Um, Serafino, who's the head of Frontiers, um, basically called and said, hey, would you be interested in doing this? And, you know, working with Dean and Joel was like a no brainer. Um, I, I, I had worked with Joel before and I know how amazing he is. He's He's in, you know, he's, he's, a his guitar playing is at the top of the heap. You know what I mean? saying? Like, you know, you, you couldn't be any better than Joel Hoekstra, you know? So, um, and he's just a fabulous guy and a great writer and, you know, just somebody I'd love to be in a band with. Uh, so it was, that was easy. And Dean, I've always been a fan of his, I mean, I've been a fan of his drumming for what, 40 years now, something like that. Um, but, and known the guy for a long time, um, and then I, I just, I, I love his voice and, and his voice is really compelling to me and was that would, that was the real clincher of how, why I couldn't resist doing this. Cause I love his voice. It really gives me goosebumps. And um, so again, you know, that was a, that was a very easy decision to make. Never really understood why they didn't just make him the new journey singer. He, he they talked about it. He doesn't really want to do that. I don't think that's something that's not that's a little that's more than Dean cares to to take on. That's because it, it would be a lot of pressure, a lot of responsibility. Um, and I you know, it's not that he can't handle pressure or anything, but I think he he feels better. You know, certainly Arnell is doing an amazing job. So, you know, I think he's he's very happy about that. And he wouldn't know what to do with his feet as a drummer. Well, you know, I mean, actually, you know, he when we went to do the videos, he was like, guys, you know, I've never really fronted before. And we're like, you'll be fine. And he gets up there and he's he's a natural performer. He knows what to do. He fell right into the job. So I have no fear he would be a great front man. But um, but yeah, I get it. I, I, I can see how that would be that would be a, you know, it'd be it's better left to Arnell is what I think he's thinking. And I think that's a great thing. <laughs> Did you guys as a band get to choose which songs you were releasing as singles? Uh, Against the Winds is out there and Changing My Mind is out there. No, the label generally does the singles. So Alessandro and the label, I think, dealt with that. Um, again, I, I'm I'm not producing on this, so I get to kind of kick back and let other people drive the ship. <laughs> Revolution Saints, uh, but I mean... In all honesty, not a huge, huge, huge following, but certainly a passionate following. And some yeah. of them a little irked when uh, Jack Blades and Doug Aldrich couldn't continue on. You guys jumped in. I mean, this is sort of a normal thing with bands. Where guys are just unavailable or moving on. Did you face, did you hear or see any backlash yourself? Uh, I personally haven't seen or heard any. I'm, you know, I mean, I, I, I just haven't, but um. I'm sure it's out there. Who knows? Um, but, you know, I mean, I'm a I'm a I'm friends with Jack and Doug and think the world of them. So um, there's no bad blood on the band side. So um, I, I think fans are fine with it. I mean, in the in the long run. Yes, I think they all they always like to see loyalty in a band. And that feels like disloyalty. But but the reality is in this day and age with all the various projects people have to do, it is very understandable when it doesn't work out. You can't really maintain a career on one band today, it seems. Well, no, that's well, I mean, like I I don't have to do all these projects. I could just be in Foreigner and be fine. Um, but I do these because I love them, um, you know, and whatever extra money comes along or whatever, that's fine. But but I really do it because I love the. I love to make music and I, I I've got my studio and I love my studio and I love to spend time in it. So, um, so that, that's why I do it. Um, but having said that you're right in that, you know, I couldn't just live off of revolution saints. So yeah, it makes it tough. You have another project with frontiers music called the end machine who has a new album coming out, uh, on March 8th. It's yes. quantum phase. And, you also have a band member change. Um, Robert Mason is no longer with the band. He's uh, you have. I hope I pronounce his name right. Girish Pradam as the, your new vocalist. Girish Pradam, yeah, you're 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 close enough. That's very close. <laughs> so, uh, how did you end up getting Girish? Was this another Serafino find for you? It was actually uh, Serafino made the suggestion, um, and you know. 
Hey, it was it was tough for for George and I especially because, uh, well, and Steve too because I mean we all three adore Robert and he's still a close friend and I think the world of him and he didn't do anything wrong. It was not like you know, it's not like he he did something bad and then had to be replaced or was fired or anything like that. It's not that. Um, but when we heard Garish and Serafino's thoughts were, this will be the needed energy to maybe take this to the next step. And um, I think he was right. I mean, Garish came in amazing voice, obviously. That's, I mean, anyone, <laughs> you hear the first song and you know what an amazing voice he's got. Um, but he is he's a great writer and he had a great attitude and you know, we did have to do long distance writing with him in India, but he took suggestions. Great. Whenever we had to do rewrites, he, you know, he never, he never get, got all uptight about it. He was, he, his attitude maintained was fabulous throughout, uh, you know, and he put in a lot of hard work and I think came up with amazing lyrics and melodies at the end of the day. And I'm, I'm just, I just couldn't be more proud of the, of the effort. And I certainly do, uh, realized what a good idea was getting him in the band. I have to agree with you there. You've only released one single so far, Silent Winter, and people are losing their shit over it. People love yeah. the song. They can't believe how good it is and can't wait for more. Well, I know. The response has been phenomenal, and, and we're really excited because the whole record is really strong. And... um yeah, I mean it's it's a it's a it's a nice thing, and and again, I got to give Garish a lot of credit because you know I think him being a fan of our style of music, you know, docking kind of music or whatever you want to call it, um, he just fit right in, and he he really knew what he was. He really came in with the fan perspective of wanting it to be great, uh, and and knowing what knowing what fans want, and I think that's a big help. It's kind of what I get to do with Foreigner because I was a Foreigner fan before I joined Foreigner. So I think I'm kind of qualified to be musical director because I think I know what fans want. <laughs> and I think it's the kind of the same thing with Garish in M Machine. Um, he he just really came in and delivered. And we have a powerful chemistry and um, we're just all extremely excited about the band. Could you see this particular project doing a couple of live performances, maybe festival appearance? Well, there's a lot of pressure for it. Put it that way. A lot of pressure. So um, I I don't know about 2024. That's going to be tough. Uh, but having said that, um, we are all really committed to trying to make something happen somewhere along the line. Uh, you know, it is difficult. Garish does live in Bombay uh, or Cal. Or is he in Calcutta? I think. Anyway, anyways, wherever he is, he's in India, and uh, uh, so you know that's a that's a bit of a logistical problem. But um, you know, there's visas to get and all that kind of thing. But like I say, uh, it's something we would love to do. Uh, if it can happen, that would be great. Um, and we'll see. You and George Lynch, besides having been in Dawkins together and doing many albums together, you're both kind of one of your projects or each calling it quits. Lynch mob is doing their final run though. Theirs I think runs through 2025 and you're winding things down with foreigner. Are you going to focus more on your producing once you're coming off the road with foreigner? Yeah, I would say yes. I mean, you know, there, I mean, once I'm off the road with foreigner, there is some foreigner music that we'd love to finish up if possible, uh, some new songs that that Mick has floated uh, that just never got finished that we would love to finish and do. Um, but yes, of course, I mean, this is my life, this room right here <laughs> and uh, or these rooms, I should say. Uh, and um, yeah, I'd love to do more producing. And if I get to play live with some of these projects in 25 or that thereafter, that'd be great. So what if you put out this foreigner music and people eat it up and they they hanker to see it perform live? There's a dollar amount. <laughs> An honest musician. I love it. <laughs> yep. You guys are heading out this summer with Sticks, John Waite, kind of like a 80s uh, rock star reunion there. Uh, you must be looking forward to that. Oh, yeah. For one thing, we love the Sticks guys. We've done a lot of touring with them. And they're not only are they just a great band, and, you know, I mean, 
you're not going to ever see a bad stick show. They're always great. Um, and they're great guys. And I love John Waits' music and I love his voice. And I'm just really looking. I mean, it's so nice to think that, you know, we're going to alternate headlining with sticks. But um, on the nights when we're in the middle, it's going to be nice to think that we have this nice voice to listen to before we go on stage. It's gonna, I mean, well, we will with sticks too, of course, when we headline. But but uh, no, I'm really looking forward to John Waite being out there. I mean, I love his music. So um, I just think it's going to be a real strong night of music. Absolutely. I'm I'm looking forward to it. And I've I've seen you all live before and and nobody's a slouch. That's for sure. You guys all kill it. Where are you at? I'm in Massachusetts. Oh, OK. Where where in Mass? Uh, I'm in Plymouth. I'll probably catch you guys in Mansfield. <laughs> oh, OK. Great. Yeah, we will be there. <laughs> I saw John Waite do an acoustic thing down in New Bedford, and that was fantastic. And oh, I, uh, bet. I bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love his acoustic version of Missing You. And yeah, it's great. Love it. <laughs> so while I was looking up Jeff Pilson stuff, I noticed <laughs> it was the 40th anniversary of Dawkins Tooth and Nail in mm. this year. And, it is. Uh, that was your first album with Dokken, and it's kind of maintained uh, in the pop culture lexicon. I, I've heard Into the Fire on a wrestling show. I hear Alone Again on the radio. I mean, it's kind of the record that really that really stood the test of time for Dokken. I, yeah, well, there was something very inspired about it. You know, um, it was uh, there was it was there was a powerful chemistry. I mean. George and I just sparked on that record, you know, and and the the initial writing session. Well, the initial writing sessions <clears throat> we did while we were touring "Breaking the Chains," the previous record. You know, George and I would set up in hotels, and we started writing a bunch of the songs then. And then when we came home, I spent a solid month going down to George's house every day and night, and we worked our asses off um, to start the writing process. And it just we just built a chemistry that exists to this day. Um, and then uh, and then Don came in and added some really powerful stuff to the record and it just came out amazing. So I, I think, it, yeah, it was the it, we we f we were a hungry band that were on fire and we were very motivated and we were pretty damn focused. So, yeah, that record and then under lock and key, the next one were were the creative peak of Dokken. Now, a lot of times during these uh milestones uh record companies kind of bring things back out and now in the age of vinyl it would be nice to maybe see this record get its uh vinyl release again uh are there any plans for anything like that that you know of i don't know because we have very very little to do with all that now um it's a complicated business thing but um but uh, I don't know. I, I I know I was disappointed in the box set that came out last year. I just thought it was plain, plain. Great word for it. There's no extras whatsoever. And see, that's that's corporate people making decisions not based on anything artistic or anything fan oriented, and that that pisses me off, frankly. I mean, I, I'd love people to buy it because I think they should buy it. But I mean, it kind of pisses me off that they put out a product with so little thought behind it. Um, I mean, I've got shit lying around that could have been great extra, you know, extra stuff. And and I offered, by the way, and and nobody listened. And and that that makes me angry. Yeah, I hear you, man. I would have, I would have liked to have seen something a little better with that, a little better with the yeah. winger one they did. They did a rat one. It was all pretty much the same. They just yeah. took your logo and put it on a box. <laughs> yeah, and they didn't remaster the vinyl correctly. So, um, you know, it's like I would love to see it done correctly. And there are companies that do it, but now they're not going to be interested because it just came out. So I don't know. I, I don't, I don't think we're going to get a good re-release of that unfortunately um because i think it should happen too but such is life <laughs> are we gonna get any new music from black swan this year we are reb beach was just here well not this year sorry it's probably gonna be 2025 but reb beach was just here last week and in fact i was just gonna as soon as i get off the phone with you start working on it um we can we we wrote the first seven songs already we had a monster productive week last week working our tails off and having a blast but um the black swan record is going to be really cool i'm really excited about it so um yes there will be new black swan music coming 
Are you working on any other projects with Frontiers or otherwise? The three that you mentioned are all that I'm doing right now. I am I am finishing up um, some prog music that I that actually started 30 years ago. Uh, it's a prog project that I have with um, Craig Goldie, uh, Scott Warren from from D the Dio band. We were in the Dio band together 30 years ago. Uh, well, actually, Craig wasn't in it at the time, but anyway, but Scott was. Uh, and then a friend of mine, Tim Pedersen on drums. And we're working on some of the material that we had 30 years ago. Uh, the material is all done, um, but we need to we just need to add we need to add real drums to um, that. We have, you know, we're a prog band, so we have a 17 minute song uh, that's very complicated. Uh, but we're adding drums to that, which is a slow and very deliberate process, but I'm having a blast doing it. Uh, so I'm doing that. And I don't know when that's going to come out or see the light of day. There's no time schedule on it. We're just doing it purely for artistic reasons. So don't know about that. But whenever it happens, uh, it's going to be exciting. And I can't wait. When you say Prague, you mean Prague like Yes and King Crimson? Yes, or Prague yes like and King, King Crimson. Theater? Two, two huge influences on the act. Yes and King Crimson. Great, 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 great things to pick out. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jeff, those are all the questions I have for you today. The New Revolution Fabulous. Saints album. New Revolution Saints album comes out on February 9th. It's called Against the Winds through Frontiers Music. On March 8th, you have the End Machines new album coming out, The Quantum Phase. Seems like really productive time period for you, and I'm glad you could take the time to speak with knac.com today. Well, hey, I love you, knac.com. We we go back a long way, and I'm I'm a huge fan, and I'm really uh, I'm a supporter, and will be till the day I die. So thanks for all the the things you guys do, and great interview.